Okay, in continuation of our talks about drawing with value, I want to get into the idea of drawing with directional lines now. So in order to do this, I have this pine cone over here um, because it has a lot of different curves. They're going in different directions. It's a really good example of something that you would need some kind of directional shading in. Now, directional shading is essentially just a form of cross-hatching, but we're really thinking about um, pulling out those curves um, and varying our marks a little bit so that they really, um, they really get at the essence of what that shape is, the essence of the shape of the darks and the lights. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of start roughing, roughing this guy in. I'm using uh, a little bit um, thicker of a point than I'm really used to, um, just to kind of, kind of show you what it feels like with those micron pens that you're using out of your kits. Um, so I'm just going to kind of rough this in. We're not really worried a great deal about perfection here. We're going to kind of tighten it up with our value. Um, so you can see that the, the shapes in the, in the pine cone start to, to kind of flower out like a blooming onion if you've ever been to an Outback Steakhouse. So, starting to get that structure down. Kind of, when we're, when we're mapping something in, you can kind of keep your, your marks nice and wispy and light and really, you know, worry about tightening up later. Um, you don't really want to make any marks that are just so finished that, you know, you can't add the value in. Because some, sometimes that value is going to, will just have something that doesn't really show the, the drawing mark anymore. It won't show that line anymore. It'll just show, it'll just show value and build, build up the form by, by having value. So, you know, maybe we'll leave some spots out. We'll leave it light, kind of like we did in the, in the case of the, of the cone, you know, so that you have to define the edge with your haloing. Um, or maybe, maybe you'll just use that directional line to show people where everything's going. So I have this pine cone almost, almost blocked in. So in just a couple seconds here, we'll start doing some directional shading and so kind of showing you what I mean about building up that form with your value. Okay, so there you go. That's probably my last little cut. So as I look at the pine cone, I see that we have a lot of marks that go kind of this way. And then opposite that, we have marks that sort of build it up um, from left to right. So I'm going to start by go ahead and doing a longer mark that follows kind of this piece that's coming out. And opposite of that, there's sort of a dark that goes along the middle of it that I'm just going to do shorter, shorter lines. And it's darker down here. So even shorter and closer together down here to give that idea that it's coming out of this darker central spot. Now, here's sort of where I was talking about where some of your lines, some of your directional shading lines will feel almost like that pointillist feel that we were doing, that, that, um, that stippling method. Um, so this has a directional shade like this, and then it has something opposite of it going this way, you know, and I'm building in rather than keeping all of my lines straight, we'll do that curve to kind of make it feel like it's going around like this. You see that? And then, you know, the curve goes this way too. And so because we're following that curve with our, with our value, we can start to 
can start to feel how that object is round and not just just a flat piece. And also, as we're looking as we're looking at things, you know, I've drawn a couple of these different segments of the pine cone. So there's this there's this tendency that the human brain has to, once we've figured something out, well, that's what it looks like. That's what I'm doing. But the pine cone's a good example because despite the fact that we maybe understand how this shape generally works, each one of these feels just a little bit different, you know? So maybe, maybe the directional shading changes a little bit from piece to piece. And that, that's something that we really need to be aware of. We really need to look at whatever object we are trying to draw and really speak about the differences in that drawing, that'll make your drawings feel more realistic if you are able to kind of bridge that gap between what it is we think something looks like and what it actually looks like. And the number one way to do that is to really focus on these values and how they change. Again, doing some directional lines this way. So, here we go. Some lines up like this. It's a little bit lighter over towards this edge. I'm going to kind of do almost a stippling thing. Give that feel. And, and here's where we talk about some of that idea of haloing, you know, it's dark on this piece here, and this piece starts to pop out because it's dark along its edge outside. Same here, you know, we have these different layers of darkness that pops out. But this edge here is kind of dark, so I'm going to lighten up as I get on here. This will still feel pretty dark, but this area will feel like it's popping up still. But I want this area, like this change between this little segment and this little segment to really work against each other. So I'm going to make this very dark so that this piece will pop off. And then I give it a little bit of a lip, just like I see on my pine cone. So the top of it's kind of this light feel. It looks kind of like if you've ever drawn a coffee mug, you get that little rim that ends up feeling really light at the top of the dark, to the dark value. So here we go, another spot where it's really, really, really dark, right behind the like semi-dark piece. But I get some directional lines that go this way as well. And that ends up giving me this crosp, which will make that feel even darker. And we can start to feel how this thing starts to come together. And really just don't be afraid when you're drawing to kind of try to figure out how your, how your tools really work, you know? Um, the more you experiment with your mark making, the more the drawing will have some capability of having form. Because, you know, your, your lines are, are very different from, from piece to piece. But look how this is kind of starting to create some depth. So there you have an idea of some directional shading and how that can start to build in your form can start to build in your different pieces and really make your objects feel round and like they're sitting in space. And so here you see the finished pine cone drawing and you see how we had the directional shading to to uh, give us the idea of the shape of the piece. We have the 
various darks behind lights to give it some more depth. We've added a little bit of cross-hatching line down at the bottom to give it um, some remove from the actual surface that it's sitting on so that it actually feels like it's sitting in space a bit. So we've used those marks to create a number of different patterns and move it back and forth um, and give it a little bit of depth and shape. So good luck to you. I, uh, I hope that, that this drawing tutorial has helped you a bit. Thanks.